The Justice Department is opening a broad antitrust review of the big tech companies. And I think they're geared towards Amazon, Google, and Facebook. I think they're, they're in the, the, the target three big techs. Am I right? You are. And we've talked a lot this morning about the idea of, is it really about privacy? Is it about censorship of conservative media? Or is it about antitrust? If it's about the final category, antitrust, I have two very quick comments. In no way, shape, or form can any reasonable person believe these companies are a monopoly. They're, I mean, they, they have so much competition. We're sitting here earlier talking about Snap having record user growth today. Yeah. Uh, it's another social media competitor to Facebook. How do you have two companies that are potentially antitrust problems? Twitter is one of the other names that gets hung out there. I, don't, I believe that their bigger liability will be on privacy protection. I think that's where there's more concern in the public square and there's more bipartisan support. David? Let me give you an analogy as to why it's a big deal. The financial companies out of the financial crisis that some of them went about five years where their stock prices didn't go up at all because the first investigation led to big fines. Then there was another, then another. Yeah. It was the constant. We're getting hit by New York Attorney General, then California, the feds, this. It's once that train starts, it doesn't always stop. And it held Citigroup and Bank of America, Wells Fargo. J.P. Morgan kind of performed through it. But my point being, that's what I think the issue is here with Facebook. This is just early innings of what I think they face as a kind of societal revolt against a lot of their business model. I think that's exactly right. And by the way, it's not just in the United States. I mean, Europe, Europe has obviously yeah. come, has been actually the harbinger of bad things to come, right. taxes, regulations, etc. News on Facebook's Messenger. It allowed children to talk to strangers. Okay, so they launched Messenger Kids, and this is for users under the age of 13. And for those users, your parents have to give you approval in terms of who you can chat with. So in this uh, Messenger Kids uh, function, they actually had a group chat. And how that group chat worked was one kid would call... Uh, you know, another one, and then they would add their group. But then when, when I added another user, you don't necessarily have the permission to talk to the rest of the people in that group. So that uh. enables you to speak to complete strangers in some cases, and also people that you are not pre-approved to talk to. Yeah. And there is a child, online child <laughs> private protection act as well that uh, Facebook but, really it, needs but, to be careful. It's a minefield, but look, the stock is only down a book. Which, that's it. It goes to David's point about privacy. I mean, see, that is the number one thing that's gotten the French in irritated and, and people all over the world. I just think, as, as Susan said earlier, the regulatory overhang for this company is going to be profound and it's going to be around for a long time. And also, I, don't forget the DOJ is already looking into a probe into Google has already been open and this is because they dominate search. 90% of search goes through Google. I mean, that's that's powerful. YouTube has over 1.8 million monthly users. This messenger story, Susan, may be a bigger deal than a lot of the other ones we've talked about this morning. First of all, Mitchell, Sadie, and Graham, my kids, if you're listening, put down Facebook <laughs> Messenger. Second of all, there's one thing that gets everybody riled up is with our kids. Children. Yeah. And, and this, by the way, this, this, is, this, is, a, this is a problem. Before. It's been happened a, before. There's, there's been a different Facebook story having to do with kids' privacy. So, right. you know, Facebook, children, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Uh, look, I just want to say one thing. My problem with big tech companies is their power. They exactly. know everything, everything about everybody in this studio and everybody in our audience. And I don't know what they're going to do with that power. And it worries me that a, a handful, two or three or four multi-billionaires have this knowledge about every person on the planet. And we think they're just going to be so benign. And did you see I where disagree. New York, I think today or yesterday, uh, came out with some sort of ordinance saying that Google Maps should no longer be able to determine where you are all the time. If you're in New York, that automatically has to go off. I don't know how they're going to enforce that, and I don't even know that it's actually proposed yet, but I think that's kind of interesting. In other words, people, and by the way, some people want this. They want to be able to walk into Macy's and have uh, Macy's know they're there so they can come at them with advertising. Sure. It's sure. all yeah. very the phone gives you the option to opt in or opt out of all these That's different right. apps on location. Yeah, but from an investor's standpoint, I want to bring it back to the investors. <laughs>
But well, that's a good point. Look, look, I can bet it on the thing on. I, but that, I'm going to help you anytime you need help with that stuff. But listen, I really think it's important. A long time. None of these things we're talking about are going to get settled next week, yeah, next totally month, right. or next year. We're in right. early innings of our society answering questions about this new technology. The point is to investors yeah. that these yeah. things are trading at 30, 50, 80 times earnings, depending on the company. And so you don't have a lot of wiggle room as these things get resolved the valuations probably have to compress. Right. Well, That's a the problem. DOJ Big Tech Antitrust Review, they say that they don't have any end goal definition just yet. Yeah. And there's a range of options that they're looking at. So, yes, they're looking at it, but will they eventually enact anything? I mean, I, th- I think that's a high hurdle to cross. And by the way, the government will now be investigating things that they're doing now. This industry is evolving so quickly that we don't even know what they're going to be looking at a year from now. We don't know what all this information that Stuart's upset about is going to, how it's going to be used. Or that you're not alone. A lot of people are upset about it. That's very true. But we have no idea where it's going. We've got 30 seconds, and I'm going to reintroduce a story which we've covered twice on the show this morning already. Fake meat. Duncan's getting into it. Um, Our favorite story. And look at that. Look, I, I, I do this because look, look at Beyond Meat. Look at the price there. Yes. Two one and three dollars a share. And David, who is with me, with me for the last ninety minutes, you point out what have they got? Sales of thirty-seven million. Is it? Uh, was it? On a quarter, but they're on track okay. to let's call it a hundred million to be generous. And the company that. is worth twelve billion. That's right. I think that's a little high. Do you? Yes, I, I do. <laughs> I just just have a you feeling about growth. it. You have to get in front of the trade. You don't buy it when it's already worth so, that much, Susan, right? It's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's, that's, right. that's why we have a PE ratio. You have a ratio to buy growth, and there's reasonable ratios. A hundred and twenty times sales is well, perhaps Netflix, the high yeah. side Netflix, of buying growth. Netflix is eight hundred <laughs> times, and that's reasonable. And, and Netflix lost. And net, no, and Netflix last week went down forty dollars in one day, and their PE ratio came down to one hundred and twenty times earnings. I didn't know that we were going to have such a lively show. I thought we were going to go to the <laughs> military. So, when someone for goes real after life, my real life, life. Steak, I get very emotional. This is <laughs> right. a big topic for me. Now, weekly oil inventories. Now, without getting technical, this is how much oil we've got in storage, how much we used, or how much we added to storage. Wow. It might make a difference to the price, Susan. Oh, does. So it's more than twice what we expected in a drawdown. So we're using a lot yeah, of oil. So we used up a 10.83 Whoa. million barrels. Whoa. Economists are looking for a drawdown of 4.1 million barrels. So that's more than twice what was expected huh. in the supply drawdown. Now, crude prices, we were sitting at a four week low, a bit of a bounce back since th- there is less supply. And as you know, with less supply, equal demand huh. that boosts up prices. Price up a little bit, but still at $57 a barrel. Your comment on this, please, Mr. Barnes. Well, there is a supply element here because of how much more was used, but that comes out of a demand story. Demand for oil is extremely high. The high <laughs> demand is a byproduct of a growing economy. The U- this, I'm a supply cider, as you know. We are generating more production of oil in the U.S. We're using more and more is being used around the world. I think that this is a long-term secular story. The United States States is going to become a net exporter of oil. It'll be the great growth story in our country of the next 10 years. Come on in, Charles Payne, host of Making Money. I also have David Barnson with me. Everybody's looking at the Mueller hearings and wondering what the devil's going on in relation to Wall Street. There is no connection to Wall Street. There's no connection, no constitutional crisis. I think the spectacle uh, uh, is not working out, I think, the way the Democrats want, and it's not affecting Wall Street at all whatsoever. All right, hold on for me a second. I've got breaking news on Boeing. First of all, show me the stock. I think Boeing stock has just taken another dip to the Southlands. Yes, it's now down at 2%. Would you buy Boeing, a truly great company, beaten down as it is, would you buy it at 366? First, let to go David Barnson. Buy it at three. Now, I know this is not the kind of stock that you buy. Oh, I own it heavily, Stuart. It's oh, you one do? of our base holdings. We're up 350% since January I, 2016. Sorry, didn't know. Are you going to buy any more? Yeah, we absolutely are. You know, Boeing is the biggest dividend grower in the Dow since the year 2000. It has grown the dividend 16% per year for 19 years. Earlier this year, they said we're going to hold off on stock buybacks while we get through this, mm-hmm. but we're going to continue growing our dividend. They're committed to three years of paying out 100% of free cash flow to shareholders. And Boeing is the biggest dividend payer of cash out to shareholders of any company. We're absolutely buying Boeing at this level, but there's going to be some hurdles along the way.